Considering the fact that I came up through the Depression, that was pretty tough too because there was really nothing to look forward to. Having no foundation of family or family support behind me, there was nobody that I could relay my feelings to and have a conversation about this. There wasn't anybody to comfort me in the middle of the night. This place is in some respects my family. The people, the connections that I made here, the help that I received here. I didn't remember anything about living in a family. My whole life, till I was 14, was in the Boys and Girls Aid Society. That was my home. I remember a lot about the uh, Altadena campus because every Friday after school, they brought in a movie, the movies that were available in that day. It was in the early 20, late 20s and 30s. And we got to see a movie. We all walked from our place and sat in there and watched Silent. They were silent, of course, way back then. And uh, that was a treat. That was one of the big treats. When I ended up at Five Acres, I thought that was the end of the line. It was very easy as a child to become institutionalized very quickly. Five Acres had a program called Special Friends, which is where I, I met my soon-to-be mother in my new foster family. They started out as special friends and it was weekend visits that turned into uh, a week-long visit, and some time over the summertime, and eventually it turned into a, a foster placement with the intention to adopt. When I was first adopted and brought into the Hammond family, my father's father, my grandpa, Grandpa Fred, pulled me into the kitchen of our little house and he shook my hand and he says, when you meet kids, and people in your life, I want you to shake their hand and no matter what they say to you, you look them in the eye and tell them you're a Hammond. I was a kid that was in the foster care system without any familiar uh, family to speak of. There weren't aunts and uncles and grandparents, anything as resources, there weren't weekend visits, there wasn't that sort of thing. This gentleman came up to me one day when I was playing by myself down in the Kodiak Lodge and he kind of pulled me aside, I was alone, and he kind of came up as if he was telling me a secret. He's like, you know, I want to tell you something. I'm like, yeah, what's that? He goes, you know, you're different. He goes, you're going to make it. You have what it takes to survive. So you just have to have faith and, and trust and know that that's possible. That was the first time I can honestly say in my life I felt that I had hope and that somebody understood. What if that guy said that to every one of these kids? What if at some point in time in his interaction with these children, he pulled each one aside and, told, and gave them each that amount of hope, separately and individually? What a wonderful gift that would be had that been the case. The people that helped me when I lived here. What I can say is thank you, you know, because whether you knew it or not, you made an impact on this child, on this person's life, and, uh, and an impact that stayed. I left the home when I was 14 and graduated from high school in South Los Angeles in 1937. From then on, until they both passed away, we were very, very close. I loved my sisters and they loved me. Oftentimes when I come over we visit, the conversation does fall on the past a lot because it's, it's an amazing thing we went through. It was, uh, it was quite an adventure, so I think that we're still recovering from it. <laughs> I would say to the people that are working here today to recognize the gift that you're giving. Each one of these children that are here matter, and each one of these children that are here have a future, and the, what they learn here and their experience here has an impact on how they function the rest of their lives. And you have a powerful piece of that.
Five Acres, providing services to children and families in crisis for 125 years.